It's on you. Yo, what's up? This is Cool Keep in the building, you know what I mean? We here doing it up with Jeff Sauster, baby. You know, you check it out on the sausage, baby. Check it out. Cool Keep in the building. Keep it up right here, you know. That's it. Jeff Sauster. Jeff Sauster, baby. The S, the O, the S, the T, the E, the R. Just Sauster, baby. That's man, how you do it. Keep. How you been, man? Good to meet you, okay, man. how you doing? I'm all right. And what's the new super group you're working on? Uh, I'm just doing all types of stuff. Well, I seen you had a super group with a whole bunch of guys, including yourself. Oh, I'm, um, you know, I always got MCs. I'm finding on the streets and everything. I'm always assembling like a little farm team up. Uh, you know, I got lyrical training. I got um, where I get dudes to stay lyrical training and all that. So that's a thing I'm doing too. Is my music is training a lot of artists. I, I would love to be trained by Cookie. I mean, I mean, you probably got your skills up already. I'm, I'm, I'm running a lyrical training camp, so we stay on records and we make records not only for, you know, the, for the record sake of it. We keep making records for like just to stay sharp on our lyrics and you know, making songs just from the heart instead of just making them for like red tape and record companies. You know, we just keep making records regardless. Don't you got a project? What is it? Uh, Love New York, something like that. Well, I got the New York out. Oh yeah, um, with um, with um, Ray West. Um, that's like. A collaboration with me and um, a couple of artists. You know, AG is on it, and um, um, OC is on it. Um, um, Curious George. Um, it's like a project. I'm always a part of some other person's group. You know, that's Ray's project, which is a good project. Then I got my own. You know, the New York. Um, well, not New York, but the album Love and Danger. And I'm working on my own future album. And I got this dude called Metropolis coming out and. You know, you can always step on my videos through the um, websites and Cool Keep stuff and like um, Cool Keep CO.UK keeps you up on the most current stuff that I'm doing. Like a lot of people are not aware of, of me doing new stuff. Only, like you said, it's more people aware of me doing new stuff than the people that were stuck in the ultra magnetic time. You know what I'm saying? Hey, well, you know, they, they love that. You know, they love the ultra magnetic Well, yeah, well, it's a whole different crowd from that time. The fans from that time is different. You know, Octagon fans is totally different from um, that time. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's like a double sport. We were dying to hear Living Astro and uh, Apartment 2. -2 well, uh, like you said, it was such a... Well, well you know, festivals, they got kind of stiff sets. They want you to be off at a certain time. But that's the, you know, that's the way they work. But uh, if we come to a better... You know, we'll do another... We'll do it more at a place where we, we, you can hear all those records at an intimate venue or something. Where it's like we bring this crowd indoors somewhere and we do the same thing. How would you say the industry has changed from when you came in the game till now? Uh, it's a little more wordplay, faster lyrics. Uh, the kids definitely got good lyrics and speed, but I'm still there, you know, with my speed also. And I was always ahead of time, so I think they just catching up. The kids are jumping in at the time that I was already ahead of time, so... I mean, of course, my classmates that came out at the time that I was rapping, they couldn't adjust to the new styles and the kids rhyming now. So I, I just ha happened to be one of the most fortunate artists to lyrically adapt into the future and still maintain, maintain the, um, the flow, the tempo and everything like nothing. You know, you don't see me stiff and, you know, I'm not stiff on the cadences or nothing like that. So. It's an honor, basically, you know, and I, I don't hate the kids. I, I feel like it's good for me. I, I keep them sharp on they, th you know, I keep them up, you know, because like you said, you you know, you don't got too many dudes really that could um, sit a lot of these kids down, basically rapping now, you know, like you said, you got a lot of rookies coming up, but they kind of real arrogant at the same time, too, so you still got to lyrically put it down and stay in their ass also, you know, I, you know, I'm glad that you got people like Busta Rhymes still in the game, like you said, to, to sit these kids down and let them know that, you know, they get a little too comfortable, you know what I'm saying? I've always wanted to ask, how did the uh, album that you did with Eshaan was able to come about? Uh, Eshaan was great, you know, working with him was good. I, you know, when I went to Detroit, you know, like you said, him working on, like me and him doing um, Spank Master, like right. a whole different album was like, the, you know the sounds and stuff like that working with Scott Santos it was like a whole different dimension and me and him collaborated half and half on production I did some beats he did some so that album is like 
an unforgettable classic. I, would, I mean, I would never forget working with Esham, you know, because it was like, it was good. Like, it was a whole different moment for me, basically. Uh, you know, every time I hear, like, the Prodigy song smack my bitch up, that, now that's, that's, your, that's your piece from your verse now, right? Um, yeah, I mean, well, I've been good friends with them for years, and I mean, I came on stage with them many, you know, in, in, in one night, and I did a show with them, and, you know, Liam and all of them is, Keith and all of them is great. I mean, they're great, they're a great down-to-earth group to be so big. I mean, you got other groups that ain't half as big as them, and they acting more souped up and large. I mean, you got to give them credit for their down-to-earth, you know, ability. That's how it is all the time. Most of the big groups are down-to-earth, I mean. I mean, I spoke to Red Hot Chili Peppers, Maroon 5, Pennywise. I've toured with a lot of those bands. They just, they just, I mean, they just down to earth people. So it's always the big groups that are down to earth, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have a question. What is behind room number 223? Two, two, Without, uh, well, apartment 223 two, was like my apartment in LA that was kind of crazy looking on the floor. I had, you know, rugs all spotted up when I was writing. It was like an L apartment when I was living in L.A. I had two apartments. I, had a, I kept a fly apartment up the hill. And then apartment 223 was like all my lyrics around on the floor. It was like apartment 223 was the spirit of the of, of me writing. And just that whole back cave of apartment 223 was where like... Did you know that that was Jeffrey Dahmer's house number? It was. That's what is weird about it. That's, That's why I crazy, that man. I, I, like, I had to ask. You know? Like apartment two two three was like my apartment was like wild and just rappers sleeping on the floor and just like you know girls coming over the rug dirty. I didn't care about it. It's all my lyrics just laying all over the place and it was like I ain't have no bodies in there or nothing. But it was just it was just the uh, it was just the ill vibe of my apartment. But it's funny that you said that. Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment was 223 and I lived in my apartment was 223 it's just that I wrote a song about just the illest the, the, just the, my apartment was like which just that apartment had me on an ill vibe or something like just me writing maybe the spirits or something I don't know I don't I I had an apartment at 213 in Bushwick Brooklyn and I had very bad vibes in that apartment yeah yeah cause sometimes my apartment could be like you know something might have happened in there before somebody might yeah, cut chickens exactly. heads off or something yeah yeah, you know, yeah, because I remember my old apartment, me and my girl stayed in, I know in the ceiling, it was like a, I had to scrape it out, it was like a, a Chicago bull symbol in the ceiling, like, and then, like, nobody believed me, but I...